Good afternoon and welcome everyone. It is Marie with your new school. If you can please type in your full name and school name into the chat box. If your school has multiple campuses, please also include your location so that we can track attendance. All right, I don't know who Kathy is, but I am trying to get you to join the meeting. Let me know if it just keeps saying that you're joining and joining, and I have no idea if you are actually able to see the chat box or type any information in. Um, it just keeps, it's got you in a waiting room and I can't get you out of there. So I apologize, I'm trying to figure it out. For those of you who are just logging in, if you can please make sure that you type in your full name and school name into the chat box so that I can track attendance. All right, so we're going to start in just a couple minutes. Um, again, whoever Kathy is, your, your name is just popping up as Kathy in the participant box. I cannot get you to join the meeting. I don't know why it's not letting you join. I keep hitting admit. So if you can hear me, please try logging out and logging back in because I don't know why it's not letting you. For everybody else, those of you who have just logged in, if you can please make sure that you are typing in your full name full school name. Please don't use abbreviations because a lot of schools have very similar abbreviations. So please type in your full name, your full school name and location into the chat box so that we can track your attendance so that I can submit that over to your schools. If you are a school that has multiple campuses, that is the reason why I need the location of your school so I know where I'm sending your attendance. Um, again, I need your full name, full school name and location in the chat box for attendance. And then again, whoever Kathy is, if you can hear me, 
um, I cannot get you to join this meeting. It just keeps saying joining, 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 and then pops out. So if you can hear me, please log out and try logging back in. Somebody. Marie. Yes. This is Lori from Wallace Community College in Dublin. Will you be recording this? It, they all automatically record. So yeah, okay. it's recorded. And then um, once it's recorded, I send the recording over to our IT and then they're gonna, they manage the YouTube channel and then it'll be posted on YouTube for later viewing. Okay, thanks. My pleasure. Yes, and if those of you who missed out on any other webinars and you want to see the ones that were already um, recorded, you can check out our YouTube channel. It's just all one word, your new school, and you should be able to um, watch all the videos. Or if you have students that are unable to sit in during the live, they can go back and watch it on YouTube. Also, please make sure that you guys keep your microphones muted. Um, with the large number of attendees, it tends to get really staticky. So I've manually muted everybody. Um, so just keep an eye on your microphones because sometimes Zoom will unmute your microphones. So please make sure you keep them muted and we are gonna get started. So again, for those of you who are just jumping on, it is so important that you type in your full name, full school name, and location into the chat box. That is the only way I can track attendance. Um, the participant box disappears and I have no way of tracking. Um, currently in the particip participant box, there is somebody by the name of Kathy. I cannot get you to join this meeting and I apologize. So if you can hear me, please log out and try logging back in. I don't know why your login is not allowing you guys or allowing you to join the meeting. Um, so anyway, we're going to get started. Welcome everyone. My name is Marie Strauch. I am the educator with Your New School. Today we are going to talk about only yours skincare products that pertain to aging skin, sun damage, and alpha hydroxy acids. And then I keep getting this error message for this Kathy person. Well, hopefully Kathy will be able to log in at some point. All right. So welcome. Welcome everyone. Let's get started. Last week, this is a repeat of last week's webinar because we had somebody hack. I don't know if they, they hacked it or if they were just being rude and they were messing with my PowerPoint. So hopefully we won't have any issues this time around and it will be smooth sailing. Um, this webinar is probably going to go over just over the hour mark, um, just so you guys know that as well. So welcome to Only Yours, natural, natural and Science Skin Care. Today we're going to talk about aging skin, sun damage, and alpha hydroxy acids. So our mantra is follow the instructions, the system works. So aging skin. The demand for anti-aging products and treatments is on the rise more than ever because the majority of the population is reaching middle age to over 70 middle age. So over 78 million people in the U.S., approximately 30% of the population. These consumers ranging from ages 35 to 55 years of age are the age-defining baby boomers that will spend money on anti-aging products as long as they deliver results. I am one of those people. <laughs> so scientific studies have shown that 90% of Premature aging of the skin is caused by environmental aggressions, which include pollution, chemicals, extreme climate, and most importantly, UV radiation. A reaction to these environmental aggressions are in the body. The consequences in an acceleration of the skin's aging process that includes wrinkles, loss of elasticity, sensitivities, and overall dulling of the complexion. Since the mid-1980s, there has been a great deal of research into anti-aging skincare ingredients. The breakthrough came with alpha hydroxy acid, which was the first ingredient to make a dramatic difference in the skin. Antioxidants came along in the mid-90s with vitamin C, A, and E, 
that were showing promising results in skin rejuvenation, as well as guarding against premature aging of the skin. Since then, with scientific advancements in skincare ingredients, along with alpha hydroxy acids and antioxidants, we know it is now possible to repair, prevent, and maintain a more youthful complexion. So aging skin, there are two different types of aging. Hang on, I gotta mute somebody's microphone. Give me one second. Hopefully that muted. Okay, so there are two types of anti, um, different types of aging, intrinsic and photo aging. There are two key factors that contribute to premature aging of the skin, and that is UV radiation and free radicals. So intrinsic aging is the normal process. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is really hurting today. I apologize. Um, is the normal process of aging over time. It includes decreased sebum, production of oil slows down. Thinning of the skin with aging comes overall reduction in skin tissue mass, both dermal and epidermal. Loss of elasticity, the plasticity or elasticity of the tissue increases in direct relation to the amount of moisture in the lines and wrinkles caused by deterioration of collagen, fibrils. This condition is actually a hole in the dermal tissue. And then increased dryness and dehydration. As we age, less basal cells and their accompanying lipids are being produced. Photoaging is premature and controllable aging resulting from excessive UV radiation. Photo damage is a cumulative process that takes place gradually over decades with little, with, um, little early evidence. It begins with your child's first exposure to sunlight and accumulates throughout your life with additional exposure so whether it's prolonged or incidental. So photo aging has the same signs of intrinsic aging, but more pronounced. So again, we have our decreased sebum, thinning of the skin, uneven texture, capillary distension, lines and wrinkles, increased dryness and dehydration, and elasticity loss as well. So factors of aging, free radicals. One of the most significant factors is the process, process of aging is oxidation of the skin. Oxygen, critical for life, is the main source of free radicals. A certain level of free radicals is necessary inside the body for fighting infection and for contraction of smooth muscles in the blood vessels. So what are free radicals? Free radicals are highly reactive, unstable oxygen molecules that have one or more unpaired electrons and try to steal from healthy molecules to regain balance. This process is known as oxidation. A free radical stabilizes itself by bonding with another free radical or molecule. They form a stable compound, which in turn creates another free radical. The new free radical will pair with another molecule and the cycle continues causing a destructive free radical cascade. An accumulation of free radicals in the body is known as oxidative stress. It is this process of oxidation, like the oxidation that causes rust, that can cause free radicals to damage and deteriorate the skin by damaging healthy cells. So what causes free radicals? Free radicals are produced by the body's metabolism and are involved in the defense against infection. Lifestyle and environmental factors such as radiation from sun, x-rays, tanning beds, pollutants, smog, pesticides, fried foods, cigarette smoke, certain drugs, smoke that contains nitrogen dioxide, alcohol, and stress can also include free radicals. Most medical researchers believe that free radicals are the contributing cause to more than 60 diseases and premature aging, including skin dryness, wrinkles, age spots, elasticity loss, acne, inflammation, sensitivity, and skin cancer. 
a list of some diseases associated with oxidative stress from oxygen radicals are autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, um, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, um, Parkinson's disease, retinal disease or kidney, and cataracts. So the cascade of destruction. Free radicals are a major cause of breakdown of skin tissue. Highly susceptible to free radical attack in the skin are lipids, cell membranes, epidermal barrier lipids, proteins and amino acids such as collagen, elastin, keratin, hormones, and melanin, cell structures, keratinocytes, Langerhal cells, fibroblasts, and melanocytes, and cell DNA. Antioxidants are molecules that sacrifice themselves to oxygen particles and are oxidized instead. The most commonly known antioxidants are vitamin C, E, and beta carotene. So vitamin C, water soluble antioxidant, it's a singlet oxygen free radical scavenger. So it regenerates vitamin E, reactivating its free radical scavenging abilities. Coenzyme Q10, Japanese green tea, are other singlet oxygen quenchers. Tocopherol, acetate, which is a form of vitamin E. It um, is activated in the skin when epidermal enzymes cut the acetate away from the tricopherol molecule. Beta carotene, and then also pycnogenol, which is pine bark extract, and green seeds are water soluble bioflavonoids called proanthocyanidines. These powerful antioxidants prevent lipid peroxidation and protect collagen from being attacked by hydroxyl radical, which is the most dangerous radical in the body that destroys DNA. Passion, or passion flower, beta carotene, bilberry, and jojoba also protect against the lipid preoxidation and hydroxyl radical. So the multivitamin C antioxidant serum, this, this is by only yours. This serum is a unique blend of vitamins and antioxidants that powerfully combat the damaging and aging effects of free radicals. This complex helps to improve elasticity and firmness of the skin while diminishing fine lines and wrinkles. It helps lighten pigmentation and leaves the skin smoother and firmer with a healthy glow. It's recommended for all skin types and conditions, especially beginning um, to advanced aging skin. Fine lines and wrinkles on the face, neck, and decollete can be used on the hands as well. It's great for photo damaged skin, pigmentation marks, uneven skin tone and rough texture, skin lacking firmness, loss of tone and elasticity, and dull, lifeless, and asphyxiated skin. So to use this, you would apply six to eight drops to the entire face and eye contour. You want to apply morning and evening to clean skin after absorption, then you would follow with your moisturizer. The ultimate firming serum, the ultimate in safe natural skin rejuvenation and wrinkle relaxing with maximum levels of natural Botox alternative and the latest firming peptides for a long-term anti-aging. So this is like Botox in a bottle. It is fast-acting, non-paralytic pe um, peptides infuse the system that relaxes and prevents and minimizes wrinkles and fine lines, rebuilds firmness and elasticity, resurfaces the skin clarity, smoother texture, and more even skin tone. It is a maximum professional strength for maximum results. You should see results within four weeks of using it. And then you'll just, to use this, you'll apply a thin layer morning and night to the entire face and eye area. Massage the product into the wrinkle areas, such as the forehead, between the eyes, crow's feet, and the mouth area. And then after it's been absorbed into the skin, then you'll follow with your usual gel hydrator and moisturizer. So some key ingredients, 15% um, arginine, which is a super ener um, engineered amino peptide that has the Botox-like effect in reducing 
the depth of wrinkles uh, on the face caused by contraction of muscles. Um, it's going to reduce the severity of the wrinkles up to 27% after 30 days with a maximum visible reduction of fine lines and wrinkles up to 50% within 45 to 60 days. And then we have our palmitoyl um, oligopeptides and palmitoyl tetrapeptide 3. These are composed of amino acids that act as feedback peptides. So these will help firm the skin and decrease your fine lines and wrinkles. The vitamin K repair serum. It's an advanced repair serum with 5% USP grade vitamin K that delivers noticeable results in reducing the appearance of dilated capillaries, spider veins, um, redness from rosacea, bruising, and irritation caused by skin peels and cosmetic surgeries. It's going to restore a more healthy, even appearance. You'll use this twice daily directed on affected, directly on affected areas. Follow with your usual moisturizer. Just don't apply this to broken skin or mucous membranes or inside the eye. So some key ingredients, vitamin K, it's going to strengthen capillary walls, horse chestnut, minimizes capillaries, Memoir, it's got restoring, extraordinary repairing and regenerating properties, um, bioflavonoids will strengthen capillaries and reduce fragility, and retinol, um, which is a form of vitamin A that plays an important role in anti-aging skin care. It's the purest, most active form of vitamin A. It aids in resurfacing and rejuvenating the skin to help impart a clearer, more vibrant complexion for all ages and skin types. So before we move on to sun damage, I, I have a doorbell that rings, so it tells me when people are logging in. So for those of you who are just logging in, please make sure that you are typing in your full name and school name into the chat box. It does need to be the full school name. Please don't use abbreviations um, because I won't be able to find your school in my database. Along with your location, if you are from a school that has multiple locations so that I can send your attendance to the appropriate schools. If you've already done so, then don't worry about it. All right, factors for aging skin and sun damage. So facts about UV radiation. So UV radiation from the sun and tanning beds is considered the primary cause of premature aging of the skin with loss of elasticity, wrinkles, irregular pigmentation, capillary distension, um, dehydration, and increased risk of skin cancer. So UVC is absorbed almost completely by the ozone layer of the Earth's atmosphere. UVC radiation is considered the most carcinogenic. Next is UVB, is approximately 10% of UV light and is the principal cause of sunburn. UVB is a middle wavelength, about 290 to 320 nanometers, penetrating some into the dermal layer. UVA is approximately 90% of UV light and is considered the primary cause of premature aging and skin cancer. UVA is a long wave ray, 320 to 390 nanometers, penetrating deep into the dermal and subcutaneous layer. These rays result in excessive oxidation of the collagen and elastin fibers, which results in a process called cross-linking. Normally, collagen and elastin fibers are found in nice, thick, even rows spread parallel to the skin surface in the basal layer of the skin. With cross-linking, the fibers become entangled into many disorganized bundles, which causes the skin to sag. When UVR penetrates the skin, they are reactive oxygen species, or ROS, or free radicals created. These reactive particles then set off a chain reaction of damage to the cellular membrane and eventually the DNA. So when light first strikes the skin, it is reflective and then it penetrates. The stratum corneum provides the greatest amount of reflection. The amount of protection depends on the condition of the stratum corneum and what VR comes into contact with cells, molecules, fibers, or sunscreen molecules. 
When UVR penetrates the skin, there are many reactive oxygen species or free radicals created. These reactive particles then set off a chain reaction of damage to the cellular membrane and eventually the DNA. The first visible signs of UV, UV damage appears with erythema or redness of the skin. This results from dilation of blood vessels in the dermis as a response to the byproduct of cell damage. The severity of the redness indicates the degree of damage done to the skin. The body defends itself by sending melanocytes, which reside in the basal layer of the epidermis, to, into action. These cells produce melanin, a skin pigment, which absorbs UV and visible light. Melanin production occurs about 48 hours after exposure and, and peaks about two weeks. So effects of the sun. UV radiation from the sun and tanning beds is considered the primary cause of premature aging. Skin loss, skin um, loss of elasticity, wrinkles, irregular pigmentation, capillary distension, weakening of the body's immune system, and increases the risk of skin cancer. Over 80% of all skin damage is due to sun exposure by the age of 18 years of age. 78% of incidental sun exposure causes the most damage over time. So what is SPF? So the sun protection factor or SPF stated on a sunscreen product refers primarily to their capacity to block UVB radiation. The SPF number indicates how long an individual can stay out in the sun before they will burn. For example, if you normally burn within 20 minutes, an SPF of two will allow you to stay out 40 minutes before you will start to burn. An SPF of 15 would allow you to stay out 300 minutes or 500 hours before you will burn. So when should a sunscreen be applied? Sunscreens that absorb UVR need to be applied 30 minutes prior to sun exposure to give the sunscreen time to activate. Sunscreens that reflect, which contain titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, they don't need that extra time. However, if you have a sunscreen that is a blend with both absorbers and reflectors, you must give the product at least 30 minutes for the absorption to work. So in the home care routine, sunscreen should be applied after your moisturizer and at least 30 minutes prior to going out into the sun. So depending on the SPF, again, the example on the screen, this is all if you were to burn within 20 minutes of being outside. So again, if you have SPF 2, you've got 40 minutes of protection. SPF 8 gives you 100 minutes, which is an hour and a half. SPF 15 gives you 300 minutes, which is five hours. And then SPF 30 gives you 600 minutes of protection, which is 10 hours. Now, based on ingredients in your sunscreens, we'll determine which sun ray they are protecting. So it's either going to protect or reflect against UVB or UVA. So based on the ingredients, this chart will tell you that you know, an SPF 15, 18, or 30 sunscreen that contains um, oxybenzene or an SPF 15, 18, or 30 that contains oxymethyl oxycinamate, it will tell you what it's protecting against, UVB, UVA, one or the other, or both. So this chart will just tell you which of those ingredients protect against which. So solar defense by only yours. It's an anti-aging solar, solar repair. Um, it's for all skin types. It's a water-based moisturizer. It's gonna hydrate, soothe, and heal the skin after exposure to the sun, wind, or other environmental conditions. And then we have our solar protection. So we have our moisturizing SPF 15 that contains aloe vera, papanol, and squalene. It is a UVA and UVB protectant. It's water resistant, it has vitamin E and papanol and titanium dioxide. Both offer a lightweight lotion. 
So the SPF 15 and 18 helps prevent sunburn, dry skin, and peeling. Regular use may also prevent um, such harmful effects of the sun, such as skin cancer and premature aging. These non-oily lotions vanish quickly, leaving a rich emollient to help keep your skin really soft and moisturized. So these are moisturizing sunscreens. We also have our sun protection, our broad spectrum UVA and UVB SPF 30. So this is maximum protection. It's a moisturizing sunscreen for normal to dry skin. And then we have our oil-free SPF 30 for normal to oily skin. Both contain microfine zinc oxide, grapeseed, green tea, pine bark, and rosehip. Uh, let's see what else. They are both non-oily and they also vanish quickly onto the skin, leaving a nice, your skin moisturized, soft, and supple. On to our whitening serum. So whitening serum, this is a lightweight serum. It's a mix of seven naturally derived highly effective lightening botanicals. It fades and prevents hyperpigmentation, inhibits melanin production. Uh, let's see, for use after cleansing and toning, you're gonna pump a few drops onto your fingertips and massage it into the skin. Follow with your usual gel hydrator and moisturizing cream. Always protect the skin with a minimum of SPF 15 daily to prevent further pigmentation. For maximum results, you're gonna use the whitening serum day and night. Fading will occur between four to 12 weeks, depending on the type and color of the pigmentation. Next, we're gonna talk about alpha hydroxy acids. And before I do that, again, for those of you who are just jumping on, please make sure if you have not done so already to type in your full name and school name into the chat box along with location so I can track attendance when I log off and send your attendance to the correct school. So alpha hydroxy acids have been used for hundreds of years as moisturizers and skin refresheners. French women used aged wine, which is tartaric acid, to improve their skin. Women of ancient Rome bathed in milk, lactic acid, to soften their skin. Alpha hydroxy acid products have been available since around 1989. The benefits of alpha hydroxy acids have been scientifically studied for years. These studies have shown that alpha hydroxy acids, particularly glycolic acid, help remove the buildup of dead skin cells of the stratum corneum. As a result, the skin has a smoother texture, fine lines are minimized, follicular congestion and hyperpigmentation are reduced, and the skin radiates a healthy, youthful glow. They work particularly well with photo age skin and acne prone skin and hyperpigmentation skin. The reason is because they have one thing in common, abnormal keratinization or an abnormal buildup of dead skin cells. Alpha hydroxy acids are, are a group of structurally related organic acids found in natural sources or synthesized in a laboratory. They are used in skincare formulations to promote desquamation, cellular exfoliation, stimulate cellular renewal, and thin the stratum corneum. So here are a list of the type of acids, their molecular weight, and where they are sourced from. Beta hydroxy acids work by speeding up the turnover of skin cells. They dissolve the glue that holds corneocytes or dead skin cells in the top layer, allowing fresh cells beneath to emerge. Beta hydroxy acids smooth the skin and allow the normal shedding process to occur. These effects are less potent than those of an alpha hydroxy acid. Salicylic acid is found naturally in willow bark, winter green leaves, and sweet birch. And um, butyric acid is found in butter. And again, these are less effect or less potent than an alpha hydroxy acid. So how do AHAs work? Corneocytes are held together by an ionic bonding force of the cellular glue. AHAs disrupt this ionic bonding or corneocyte cohesion between the cells by dissolving the lipid bonds between the cells and the lower levels of the stratum corneum. Corneocytes cohesion refers to the intercellular cement or glue-like bonding between the cells. AHAs penetrate by using the lipid phase of the intercellular cement as its pathway 
into the stratum corneum. It helps to visually or visualize the intercellular cement as an emulsion, a mixture of water and oil. The AHAs interfere or disorganize the lipid oil phase of the intercellular cement. As glycolic acid has the lowest molecular weight of all of the alpha hydroxy acids, it penetrates the fastest. So understanding the pH scale. The pH scale measures the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. It ranges from zero to 14. A pH of seven means it is neutral. Pure water has a pH of seven. A pH of less than seven means a solution is acidic and anything higher than seven is a solution that is alkaline. The less pH, the more acidic a solution is. The more pH, the more alkaline a solution is. The pH scale is logarithmic, which means that moving one unit either way on the pH scale results in a tenfold increase in the degree of alkalinity or acidity. So each whole pH value below seven is 10 times more acidic than the next higher value. So for example, a pH of four is 10 times more acidic than a pH of five and a hundred times or 10 times 10 more acidic than a pH of 6. The same holds true for pH value of above 7, each of which is 10 times more alkaline, another way to say basic, than the next lower whole value. So for example, a pH of 10 is 10 times more alkaline than a pH of 9. So the pH of skin. So facts about pH or skin pH. As sebum and sweat mix upon the skin surface, they form a protective layer, often referred to as the acid mantle. The skin's acid mantle has a particular level of acidity characterized by pH from about 4.2 to 5.5. In addition to helping protect the skin from elements such as wind and pollution, the acid mantle also inhibits the growth of harmful bacteria or fungi. If the acid mantle is disrupted or loses its acidity, the skin becomes more prone to damage and infection. The loss of acid mantle is one of the side effects of washing the skin with soaps and detergents with a alkaline pH. Our skin is one of the most, is our best defense mechanism against germs for several reasons. The top layer of the cells are dry and densely packed. The dryness and close quarters of this first line of defense makes it inhospitable to many bacteria. Salty secretions from sweat glands create an, an environment that is um, hyperosmatic. So high salt concentrations pull water from the inside of the bacteria, dehydrating them and thus discouraging, which is discouraging to bacteria. However, some bacteria do naturally associate with the skin. Rather than harming us, these bacteria actually help protect us and are referred to as microflora. So the first colonization of the skin by harmful bacteria means that there are few resources available for pathogen or pathogenic bacteria because the microflora outcompete the incoming pathogens. Second, some resident microflora help lower the pH of the skin. A slightly acidic pH of four to six helps deter colonization by non-resident bacteria and pathogens because many bacteria can survive only in a narrow pH range near neutral. The acidic condition of the skin are caused by secretion from your sweat glands, skin oil, and the breakdown of fatty acids by Staphylococcus epidermis. Thus, a resident microflora species is partly responsible for the acidic pH on our skin. Neutralizing or raising raises the pH of a product. So neutralization raises the pH of the product. Ingredients commonly used for neutralization include ammonium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and triethylene olamine. Neutralizing reduces the amount of free acids in the product. Free acid refers to the amount of acid actually available. So for example, Say you had a tank of acid and you put sodium hydroxide in the tank, the sodium hydroxide attaches to the acid 
it's going to bind up some of the acid. It will raise the pH and lower the acid available. Lower pH formulas have more bioavailability since more free acid is present. So 27% of a 5% glycolic acid solution with a pH of three will absorb into the skin compared to only 3% with a pH of seven. So the percentage of free acid um, has expressed by pH is an excellent indicator for efficacy and potential for irritation. Alpha hydroxy acid formulas are more effective with a lower pH. There is, however, a greater risk of irritation and stinging. Most retail products have been buffered to some degree to limit the stinging and discomfort in the acid. So buffering creates a solution that resists pH change when acid or alkaline is added. When buffering occurs, the pH of the acid can be maintained. So ingredients commonly used for buffering include sodium glycolate, uh, phosphoric acid, and monosodium phosphate, phosphates. So just like neutralization, buffering reduces the amount of free acid in a product. The percentage of free acid has expressed by pH, again, is an excellent indicator for efficacy and potential for irritation. So what are some benefits of alpha hydroxy acids? So they are great for retexturizing, removing buildup of dead skin cells that can cause an uneven appearance in the texture. They reveal smoother, fresher, younger looking skin. Smooth lines, so it's going to thin the stratum corneum, evens the hills and valleys of the skin surface, thickens the dermis by increasing moisture in the glycosaminoglycans. It's going to improve tone so alpha hydroxy acids thin the stratum corneum, the skin becomes more translucent, enhances firmness by producing densely populated epidermal cells. And it's a great management for acne prone skin, reduces follicular congestion, so it's gonna remove surface dead skin cells within the follicle, helps to prevent the follicle from becoming clogged, reduces follicular debris and retention, it's gonna open up the follicles, um, with the follicles open, other treatment products such as benzoyl peroxide can be penetrated into the follicle to kill the bacteria and interrupt the retention of hyperkeratosis process. Alpha hydroxy acids are also great for fading pigmentation. So it's gonna reduce pigmentation buildup in the stratum corneum. And irregularities in pigmentation can fade or disappear over time. However, there are potential side effects. So alpha hydroxy acids increase sensitivity to UV exposure. They can stimulate inflammation mediators. Um, Long-term inflammation may contribute to the breakdown of collagen by creating collagenases. Alpha hydroxys may induce hyperpigmentation and adverse reactions include burning, redness, swelling, blistering, and rashes. To minimize these side effects, you want to counteract the skin sensitivity to UV exposure by always wearing a sunscreen, SPF 15 or higher daily. To counter inflammation, um, you want to use the appropriate alpha hydroxy acid percentage as well as the alpha hydroxy acids for home care products. To protect against hyperpigmentation, Make sure that you recommend a sunscreen of at least SPF or higher for daily use. If hyperpigmentation occurs, recommend to your clients to use the whitening serum or the bleaching lotion. To prevent adverse reactions, you want to follow the guidelines that are uh, incorporated and incorporate the Expo Gel, which is another product that we carry, slowly into the client's home care regimen, as well as a recommending the appropriate percentage of alpha hydroxy acid. So make sure to include the appropriate gel hydrator and moisturizing cream in their home care routine. And then put your clients on an Expo gel alpha hydroxy acid home care two weeks prior to giving them any type of glycolic treatment. This will acclimate their skin and help to prevent um, adverse reactions. So our alpha hydroxy acid home care products 
This is a complete home care regimen designed to help promote softer, smoother, clearer skin and to visibly reduce the appearance of fine lines and uneven skin tone. So we're gonna go through the products that are in the home care kit. So the first one is the Gentle Citrus Cleanser. Um, it is a fresh smelling cleanser. You wanna use this twice daily to rid the skin of makeup, oil, pollutants, and other impurities. Your skin will feel silk, will have a silky feel while it's cleansing. It's a gentle cleansing system. Um, it's gonna remove these impurities without compromising your skin's own natural moisture. You want to apply a small amount, probably the size of a pearl, to your face and neck, work in circular motions, rinse with warm water, following the cleansing with a refreshing spritz of your rehydrating toner to ensure that all traces of cleanser and impurities are swept away. So some key ingredients in this is glycolic acid, so keep that in mind, it is 1%. Then we have our hydrating toner, this can be used on all skin types as well, purifies and balances the skin, hydrates and soothes. And just so you guys know, the shelf life of the products are two years after opening. The retexturizing cream. This exfoliation assist, assists when was designed with a drier, more sensitive skin in mind. Um, you're gonna apply a drop of the cream probably the size of a dime, to clean skin on the face and neck. If it's excessively dry, you want to apply equal amounts of your moisture replenishing cream with your retexturizing cream. So this does have, it is our gentle alpha hydroxy acid exfoliant. It's for very dry sensitive skin or rosacea, so skin types one, two, and three. It's going to diminish dead cell buildup. It also contains SPF. So the Exfo Gel 5%. So we have three different Exfo Gels. We have a 5%, a 7.5%, and a 10%. So depending on the skin type, you will determine which Exfo Gel you would recommend for your client. So the 5% is for skin types 1 and 2. So it is a gentle alpha hydroxy acid exfoliant. So this is for dry to very dry skin. It diminishes dead skin dead cell buildup, reduces follicular congestion, soothes lines, and skin texture. And then we have the 7.5%, which is for skin types three and four, combination and oily skin. And then we have, which they all do the same thing, it's just depends on what the percentage is based skin type that it's being applied to. And then we have the 10%, which is for very oily, thick skin, which is skin types four and five. And then to apply this, you just dampen them. You just put a few drops onto a cotton pad, and then you apply it to a freshly cleansed skin. You'll want to apply it to the face, neck, and decollete. And then you can do it every other day or just in the evenings. It really depends on your skin. And then you will with your gel hydrator and moisturizer. And then we have Moisture Seal. This is a water-based gel. This is a powerful hydrator. It's gonna lock in moisture, accelerates healing, repairs the moisture barrier, and soothes sensitivities. So this is what you're gonna apply over your Expo gel. And then always follow with an SPF of 15 or higher. And then your Moisture Replenishing Cream. This is your moisturizer. It's an oil-enriched cream counteracts excessive dehydration, irritation from alpha hydroxy acid products. It's going to repair the barrier and accelerate healing. And then your kit will also come with the redefining eye cream. It's 3% fruit acid, softens fine lines, and prevents milia. Also contains SPF of 8. And then we also have a body lotion. It is 7% fruit acid, it exfoliates dead skin cells, it smooths rough skin and softens and moisturizes. All right, so your alpha hydroxy acid usage instruction. So you've got levels one through three. So exfoliation, 
a sister should be introduced slowly into your skincare program. If any dryness, peeling, or irritation occurs, discontinue use for a day or so, and then re reintroduce it slowly. By introducing the skin to these products slowly, you'll be able to determine the individual's comfort level. Results vary, so for some, three applications a week is sufficient. For others, they get the best results applying the product twice a day. So it really depends on the individual. To minimize skin reactions, start exposure of your Expo gel slowly and recommend the correct percentage for the skin type. So again, for extremely dry or sensitive skin, they would use the retexturizing cream. For dry skin, they would use the Expo gel 5%. For combination oily skin, they would use the 7.5%. And for very oily, thick skin, they would use the 10%. Thoroughly, thoroughly explaining the side effects of using Expo Gel to your clients so that they know what to expect. Some of those um, side effects could be dehydration, stinging, etc. And then send the client home with instructions. So each of the home care kits have instructions on how to use the products. Their home care routine should consist of a cleanse, which they'll apply their um, gentle citrus cleanser. Then they'll tone with the hydrating toner, blot with the tissue. Then they would apply their Expo gel, whether it's five, seven, or 10%, with a cotton ball or a cotton pad to the face and decollete, and then apply, or apply the retexturizing cream, depending again on the skin type. Then they'll hydrate, if you're using the Expo Gel 5, 7, or 10, you're gonna follow with your Expo Gel and then seal with your moisture seal onto the face, neck, and decollete. Then you'll apply your moisture replenishing cream and or your sunblock. And then they can also put the eye cream on if they want to. Side note, you must wear a sunblock daily when using the alpha hydroxy acid products. So if they are using this product, they have to have um, sun protection on. So if you want to your home care routine to incorporate other products such as the whitening serum or bleaching lotion. So after step three, the Expo gel step, um, you'll apply your gel hydrator and you'll use a Q-tip to apply your whitening serum or bleaching lotions to the areas that have the pigmented issues and then follow with your hydrator, your gel hydrator and your sunblock. If you want to incorporate scrubs and masks, um, after step two, the toner and the skin alpha hydroxy acid, use, you'll apply your mask, leave that on for 15 to 20 minutes, then soften the mask and then remove it with the scrub. Um, specialty serums, after your toner, you can apply um, any of your serums morning and at night, followed with your gel hydrator and your sunblock. So professional products and their use. So now we're going to get into all of our peels. So this is part of our rainforest collection, which are our chemical peels. We're going to talk about them in from mildest to strongest. So the first one is our banana peel. Ooh, I'm going to mute somebody's microphone. Give me one second. Okay, since I was muting somebody's microphone, and that kind of gave me a little break. So if you have not done so already, please make sure that you type in your full name and school name into the chat box so that we can track attendance, and along with your location in case you have multiple locations. All right, back to our peel. So our first one is the banana peel. This can be used on all skin types. It's 23% mix of um, acids and has a pH of 3.3. It's 18% free acid range. It is a milder peel for sensitive skin conditions. It's um, effective for pre-extraction, pre-peel, and pre-microdermabrasion. It lightens and brightens, and it does have a banana scent. And if you are familiar with our um, rainforest collection, the treatment name is the rainforest banana peel. Next is the Arbu 30. This is a 
3% lactic peel for all skin types, even sensitive skin, has a free acid range of 30%. It's gel-based with a pH of three. It's great for hyperpigmentation, photo damage, rosacea, dehydration, and acne. It lightens and brightens for better control without burning. The Pala 50, this is a stronger percentage for deeper exfoliation. It's got a free acid range of 50%. It's gel-based formula with a pH of 2.2. This is great for hyperpigmentation, photo damage, dehydration, and acne. It also lightens and brightens with better control without burning. The CO30, this is a glycolic acid. This is for all skin types. It's the most penetrating alpha hydroxy acid. It's a milder version of our CO35. This is a gel-based formula. It's got a pH of 3.0, free acid range 30%. It's a great adjunct to treating aging and acne skin conditions. It's gonna help um, smooth, refine, and brighten. And this is called the cellular sweep. And then our strongest is our CO35. This is a glycolic acid. It's for most skin types. It is, again, the strongest alpha hydroxy acid. It is gel-based with a pH of 2.0. has a free acid range of 35%. It's the maximum exfoliation for fast results, treating aging skin and acneic skin. It's going to smooth, refine, and brighten. And it's called the cellular sweep. And then with this one, though, you definitely want to avoid um, the eye area, the mouth, and the mucous membrane because this is our strongest. So some pre-peel precautions. Many factors affect the depth of a peel. Variance in skin density, thickness, pre-peel home care, the use of alpha hydroxy acids, retinodes, um, benzoyl peroxide products, previous peel treatment mints, microdermabrasion. So to avoid burning of the skin, you definitely want to follow manufacturer's protocols and peel times on the skin. Begin clients with a mild peel and then work your way to a stronger peel. It's better to err on the side of being safe and less is more. Put clients on an Expo Gel home care two to four weeks prior to acclimate their skin. Um, for hyperpigmentation, put clients on the whitening serum or bleaching lotion two weeks prior to performing a peel. And then remember, moderate to dark skin is usually more sensitive, so always go with the mildest peel and the least amount of time and never peel a new client. So again, it's important, so we're going to repeat it. To avoid burning the skin, begin the clients with a milder peel and work your way to a stronger. Continuously ask your client for their level of sensitivity on a scale of one to 10. If they say they're at a six, you wanna take the product off. And then remove it immediately, apply cold water, baking soda solution, and cold towels. So here are the chemical peels and their timing based on skin. So our mildest peel, again, is the banana peel for sensitive, dry, thin skin. They'll stay on for two to five minutes, begin with two minutes. Normal, oily, thick skin can be anywhere from five to 10 minutes. The RBU30 and the Pala 50 for sensitive, dry, thin skin, two to five minutes. Normal, oily, thick skin, five to seven minutes. CO30 and CO35. It, again, it's great for all skin types. On the first visit, set a timer for one minute. Build up your time in 30 second increments. And then your maximum time is three minutes for either one of these. And then just note, it's not always necessary to increase your time with your peels. Peel contraindications, do not administer any of our alpha hydroxy acid peels. If a client is using Retina-A, Renova, Accutane, or Prednisone, clients must be, um, clients just began using benzoyl peroxide use um, within the last two weeks. If they've had any type of face 
for neck waxing within the last 48 hours, clients that have been exposed in the sun, wind, or is dehydrated. If a client has had a medical peel or dermabrasion within the last 90 days, client has abrasions, rash, cut, burn, or compromised barrier, do not perform a peel. If they have shaved or have any type of herpes or any type of open wounds, do not perform a peel. If this is the first time you're meeting this client, do not give them a peel. If they are pregnant or nursing, if they are, they need to have some sort of note from their physician. Or if your client has unrealistic expectations, do not give them a peel. So insulin treatments for aging skin. So the first thing you want to do is an in-depth consultation. This will prove invaluable. A better educated the client is about aging skin, the more compliant he or she will be with treatment and be and have a better outcome. An in-depth skincare consultation will be invaluable in developing an effective anti-aging treatment program. Important consultations include basic discussion of the nature and progression of aging skin, factors that accelerate aging, um, a thorough discussion of proper usage of products, potential side effects, and how to minimize them. It is important to stress the need for compliance with the prescribed home care regimen and insulin treatment for therapeutic effects to be realized educational materials such as the only your client home care cards and treatment brochures should be given to the client during the consultation to complement the clinical interaction and increase compliance of your home care regimen and clients should be given a realistic expectation about their treatment program along with good follow-up these measures can contribute to the ultimate success of your treatment so here are the things that you will need to perform your consultation. You need your dermaprint skin analysis form and a highlighting pen or a, pen or a highlighter or just a pen. You need your dermaprint form. This is the key to recommending appropriate skincare products and insulin treatments, all geared for your client's specific needs. You'll need a client folder. Um, so this is extremely important tool. The client file folder provides full details of your client's present skincare routine, allergies, medications, medical history, diet, lifestyle, environmental factors um, that affect the health of the skin. It's also used to record the appointment dates, treatments given, products purchased, as well as a file to keep your client's dermaprint analysis form in and custom blending formulas. The client home care card, these are easy to follow and understand instructions so that your clients know exactly how to use their products. And the series brochures, this explains to the client a description of the treatment given in a particular series. So if you are doing a series of treatments, the series brochure tells them exactly what each of those treatments are, how often they're going to receive them, and the benefits of them. So determining your treatment series. So the first step is, or number one, is step two is your dermaprint form. Identify your skin conditions, highlight the client's skin conditions. Step three on the dermaprint form is to determine the state of the skin condition group. This will determine if the client has inflamed or non-inflamed acne. Um, and then on our dermaprint form, this is just a snippet of our form. This is how we track all of our skin conditions. So using the dermaprint form, when you are finished, it should look like this. You go through each and every one of your skin conditions. You highlight the ones that are present in your client. You highlight whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, and where it's located. So we have the face completely mapped out, so you know exactly what areas to highlight where you see those skin conditions. And then uh, just below that, you will find this third section or step three, which is to determine the state of the skin condition group. So you're going to highlight or circle the client's skin conditions from step two in each of the boxes below. 
from left to right, you'll circle the determined date of the skin group and you circle it based on the one that has the most highlighted. These are listed in order of priority. So for this one, we've had the majority of our client, we determined that they have cellular aging. So that's what we want to address. And then directly below that, you will choose the appropriate treatment program. So based on steps three and four, we've determined that our client is going to have the cellular anti-aging series is what we're gonna to recommend to our client. And in that series, it's going to tell our client how many treatments they need and how often they need to receive it. So to get your maximum results, you're going to tell, give your client their series brochure and they're gonna come in for their first treatment, which will be the tissue renewal. Seven days later, they will come in for the tissue toning. Seven days after that, the cellular sweep. Seven days after that, the moisture boost. Seven days after that, capillary calm. Seven days after that, they'll receive the cellular sweep treatment. And then they will come back in 30 days. And then a month after that, you will do another dermaprint and reevaluate and see where their skin, where it's improved or where you're gonna go next. So the treatment series, so when you're performing a treatment series, we are combining a series of particular treatments for a cascading effect on a targeted skin condition. Each treatment works to prepare the skin for the following treatment and must be done in order of how it's recommended for your maximum results. Within each treatment, we're also combining a series of particular steps for a cascading effect on the targeted skin condition. There is a reason for each of these steps and the order of the steps, so it's important that you're following the map, if you wanna call it that. Our treatment checklist and direction sheets will tell you exactly what to do, which product to use, and how much. So for example, the Cellular Aging Series, um, this is an intensive treatment program designed to stimulate cellular perforation, oxygenation, nutritional exchange, moisturization, and encourage circulation uh, with the massagers and promote connective tissue synthesis. So Cellular Aging Treatment Series is designed for fine lines and wrinkles thinning of the skin, capillary distension, rough uneven texture, loss of elasticity, dry skin, dehydration, and irregular pigmentation. After completing a series, again, we conduct another dermaprint analysis, and then you get to choose from the following. Start the series over again, start another new series, conduct a series of glycolic or microdermabrasion treatments, or sandwich in another anti-aging treatment such as a vitamin C or an intensive hydration extreme treatment. So there, after you've done your series, that's when you're just gonna reevaluate the skin and determine what's next. Then we have the tissue rebalancing series. This is an intensive treatment program designed to restore the skin back to its optimal healthy state. Then we have the tissue desensitizing series, another intensive treatment program designed to desensitize the skin and accelerate healing. And then again, we have all of our rainforest peel treatments. So you'll schedule the banana peel, the RB30, Pala 50, Co30, or Co35. In a series of six treatments, you wanna do these two weeks apart or a series of the same peel, or you can do a series of peels from mildest to strongest. You can perform an alpha hydroxy acid peel with any of our peels by eliminating an enzyme, extractions, and the massage steps. And then these are our treatment names for our peels. So if you, if you're a school that has the Rainforest kit, so we have a complete kit that has all of the peels in in like smaller sample sizes. So we have the Rainforest Banana Peel. This is where you will use the banana peel, which is the 23% fruit acid. The Rainforest Radiant Peel, that utilizes the RV30. The Rainforest Illuminating Peel utilizes the Pala 50. Sorry, I'm gonna mute somebody's microphone really quick. 
The Rainforest Illuminating Peel, again, uses the Apollo 50. The Cellular Sweep is either going to use the CO30 or the CO35, which is the glycolic acid. And then the treatment series brochures or treatment series program. So you want to use the treatment series brochures to explain the series and to sell the series. So this information is a pamphlet that addresses various common skin conditions, explains the treatment benefits of each of these treatments. They recommend the home care products to be purchased with each treatment. It's a convenient appointment scheduler, is on the back of your brochure. Um, and it's part of the Uroderma Solution Program. So we have the treatment series brochure for aging skin, which is the tissue desensitizing series, tissue balancing series, or the cellular aging series. And then the treatment series brochure for acne would be problem skin healing series or problem skin cleansing series. And then your brochure on the front of the pamphlet is the name of the treatment series. So for our example, we're doing the tissue rebalancing. Um, and underneath is an explanation of having this particular series program. It's a convenient appointment scheduler on the back, shown on the left side, enables you to record the client's treatment dates and times. There's also a place to record the cost of the series so that your client understands their financial uh, commitment. And then on the inside shows the, describes each treatment in the order that they will be performed. It also lists each treatment suggested home care products for the customer to purchase if products were not purchased up front. So it's going to give you or give the client all, all the information they need so that they understand what you will be doing in their series. And again, it tells you exactly what home care products you should be recommending for them as well. And then to follow our protocols, the each of these treatments have a protocol and that protocol will tell you exactly what products you need to use, how much you're going to use, how to apply it, how long it stays on the skin, how long that step should take so that you're completing each of these services within the allotted time. So each of these treatments should take about an hour, 60 minutes. And again, as long as you follow the protocol and follow these treatment series, you will get your maximum benefit to your client's skincare regimen. So in conclusion, clinical studies have proven that a series of professional treatments combined with home care products will provide the quickest, most dramatic results. So for more information on Only Yours products, you would contact your account executive at your new school, and then for future webinars, you would contact myself. So if you have not done so already, please make sure that you have typed in your full name, your school name, full school name, please do not abbreviate, and along with location into the chat box so that we can track your attendance. If you've already typed it in, don't worry, it's already in there, it's been saved, you don't have to type it again. But those of you who jumped on in the middle or jumped on a little late, if you have not done so already, please make sure that you type in that information into the chat box. That is the only way I can track your attendance. And then I'm going to stay logged in for just a couple more minutes just to give you guys time to get that information in the chat box. Gina, I just lost your question. I saw it and now I lost it. Um, I will find out who your account executive is for your school and we have a whole breakdown of um, what school pricing should be um, for, based on location. So I'll have the account executive reach out to you regarding pricing and menu pricing as well. You can purchase the, the product through your new school. So let's put that, where can I? So Ashley, I'm not sure what location you're from, but I will 
look that up, find out who your account executive is, and then we can send pricing information and order forms over to your school as well. No, you cannot find only your skincare product is exclusively through professionals. You will not find this anywhere online. You cannot find it on Amazon. You will not find it in stores. They can only get it through you as long as you're carrying these products in your school. They will not be able to get this anywhere. It is extremely exclusive. You can register with Only Yours if you go to the Only Your Skin um, their website. You can register as a professional, and then you'll be once you once they approve your registration. So it's kind of you'll go to their website. You register as a professional, so you got to make sure you have your license. Um, you will register as a professional, and then you once they will approve your registration. Once you get the approval email that they've approved you, because they are going to look into you to make sure that you are licensed and that you are a professional, you will then get an approval saying that, okay, your username and password that you created is now active, and you can log into your professional account, and then you can order directly through only yours. You can register as a student, but I'm not sure if they're going to sell the products to you as a student. I think you still have to get that through your school. I'm not positive on that, but I do know there is a student registration and that allows you to take some of their online classes because they do have um, online classes that you can take through only yours. And then at the end of the class, it routes you to a exam page and then you have to take the exam and then they send you your certification. But I'm not positive if you can order all the products through their website or if it's just minimal. So we're actually working on something where the students can order, but you still have, they still have to get um, like verification from their instructor or school owner, depend, I mean, either or. And so if they email us saying that you can um, use the products, then we can order it for you guys and send it to your respective homes. And so it's sort of like a loophole because normally they only sell to already licensed professionals or schools because then you're technically using the products under your school. But that's going to be sort of like the loophole for the time being since, you know, nobody's doing in-person schooling. So if you have your instructors email us that you guys can order, then you guys can order through us as students. And then we'll have student order forms available for them to fill out. All right, I'm going to stay in for just another minute. If you have not done so already, please make sure you type in your full name, full school name, and location into the chat box so that I can track attendance. Thank you guys so much for spending a little time with us this afternoon. Logging off. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye, everybody.